Nuclear winter, there will be power. This week, a major winter storm ripped across most of the eastern United States. It caused major electrical blackouts and endangered the lives of millions of Americans. Texas, normally home to mild to mid winters, saw temperatures dip below freezing and major snowstorms hit most of the state. Demand for heat and power soared while the grid lagged behind. This sparked major rolling electrical blackouts across the state. Texans without power were forced to warm up in cars or run propane heaters in their houses. As the grid failed, power prices surged from $23 per megawatt hour to over $7,400 in a matter of days. That's the chart you're looking at right now. At current electricity prices, it'll cost the average Texan nearly $300 a day to heat their house. That's not including any Bitcoin mining going on, of course. Natural gas prices also surged. Alongside electricity prices, natural gas prices skyrocketed. This is the chart you're looking at right now. The price of the natural gas at the Waha Hub was over 6,500% increase in five days. So what happened to Texas's power grid? Texas operates and manages 90% of its electricity through ERCOT or ARCOT, Electricity Reliable Council of Texas. Well, not so reliable. Wind power is responsible for about 23% of Texas's electricity generation. Under normal conditions, this makes for cheap intermittent electricity for Texas. However, right now, roughly half the turbines are actually frozen, which means they cannot generate electricity. Even on a regular day, if this happened, there would be an issue. But during a major snowstorm where power generation is mission critical, the current system cannot handle the strain. It's times like these which provide a gut check to our ever increasingly euphoric world of 100% renewable energy and zero carbon policies. It's a kink in the design that will need a solution engineered in the next generation turbine designs. And it'll happen but it's gonna take time. Don't get me wrong. I support President Biden's mission to decarbonize and re-electrify America. And you should too. Hashtag do your part and hashtag net zero will become major taglines of the future. And yes, if you're wondering, I do have the trademarks on both of those. Anyways, Elon, known as the green savior, Musk, has become the world's richest man by doing things, saving the world, right? Whether you believe in climate issues or not, the fact is the science is showing that it is an issue. Recall, I just mentioned Green Savior became uber rich from being part of the solution. You too can make a fortune by hashtag do your part. And you don't even need to become a disciple of the Green Jesus and the Green Savior movement and convert the unholy, I mean the ungreen. A coming crisis, a major profit opportunity. In my 20 years, I've had a pretty good career to this point. I have never seen an investment opportunity as incredible and profitable as solving the climate issue. Many will have great intentions, but like all investments, meaning well won't be enough. You need the right variables, like a legitimate business plan, a management team that know what they're doing and have skin in the game, and a company that has cash and the know-how to disrupt the world in a positive way. Love them or hate them, the government is the best financial backer you can ask for. And again, the green savior, Elon Musk, used this to his advantage on his way to become the world's richest man. I do not mean the green savior is a negative connotation. I mean it with the utmost respect. And I'm not comparing Elon Musk to Jesus. What I'm doing is highlighting what Elon has done for the climate movement. By making electric vehicles and green energy cool, Elon put an electric shock into the climate movement. So many before him tried and failed. But Elon has captured the imagination of all generations, young and old, and being the world's richest man helps the movement. Pay attention to net zero. In President Biden's quest for net zero, he focuses on wind and solar being the dominant forms of electricity production. While all coal-fired plants will be rapidly eliminated and eventually natural gas plants are going to be phased out as well. While this sounds good on paper, 
it's not that easy in real life. For starters, according to the US EIA, which is the US Energy Information Association, EIA, there's over 200 gigawatts of coal-fired production still in operation on mainland USA. These coal plants are responsible for 23% of the US electricity generation, while natural gas accounts for 38.8%. Far behind are renewables, with wind and solar accounting for less than 10% combined. You're looking at a chart that I've put together that shows the breakdown of power generation by source in the United States. You can see the black is coal at about 23%. The big purple still the majority with natural gas. Nuclear, the orange, just under 20% of baseload power. The green wind at 7% and change. Hydro at 7%. Solar, only 1.7. And the others combined make up about 2.4. It's not that simple to just switch power sources. More importantly, this is baseload power, which means it can supply electricity 24 hours a day, not just when the wind blows or the sun shines. Now look, we're gonna get utility scale batteries like I've been saying for years, but it's going to take time. And the problem is you can't charge your Tesla or pay for something in Bitcoin when the power is out. Now let's talk about the much disliked redhead stepchild of the green movement, and that is nuclear energy. The nuclear power play. Nuclear power is zero emissions baseload power when operating. Nuclear reactors provide the same 24 seven baseload stability of burning fossil fuels for power generation without the harmful emissions. The chart you're looking at right now shows the CO2 emissions for each major form of baseload power. Now baseload power means 24 seven whether there's a storm or it's dark or it's sunny or it's windy or it's raining or snowing, this baseload power is reliable and it operates. If you can see the far right, coal and petroleum are awful. Natural gas is about half of coal and nuclear produces zero. As you can see, all other fossil fuels contribute significantly to the CO2 emissions. Making no mistake, solving the world's electricity generation issue is a multi trillion dollar opportunity. So let's get to what matters to you, making money. So why are uranium stocks popping? Uranium prices and stocks have been on a terrible bear market since the early 2011, since Fukushima happened. Yet in the last two months, share prices have sprung to life again on the global goal of net zero. The Katusa Research Uranium Index, which we have massive skin in the game, is up over 140% as of the recording of this. Uranium is a niche segment that has incredible booms and busts. Just look at the price of uranium since 1930, which you're seeing at the chart right now. Catching one of these uranium bull markets can make even the most impressive cryptocurrency returns look like paltry by comparison. So what is the next uranium catalyst? If I was part of the Biden administration, I would be advocating for allocating a percentage of the Biden green agenda to nuclear power. It makes all the sense in the world to combine zero emission baseload nuclear power with intermittent renewable energy from wind and solar. Not to mention, the US is already the world's largest consumer of uranium globally for electric power and the largest producer of nuclear energy globally. Now, nuclear power's Achilles heel is the significant upfront construction costs and the lengthy permitting timeline. Even with those issues over the past few decades, the timeline for construction and the construction costs, it has gone parabolic, but it's still moving forward. The key to success likely lies in the smaller, more modular reactors, which can be constructed for regional level demand. Bill Gates, one of the world's richest men and very influential, is getting behind this concept in a very big way. Elsewhere around the world, nuclear reactors continue to play a role in the global electricity generation. Over 10% of global electricity production comes from nuclear reactors. Today, right now, there are 50 reactors globally under construction. That's not planned or proposed, that's under construction, which will take the operable reactors to nearly 500 worldwide and increase nuclear power generation by 13%. I have been investing in the uranium sector for 20 years and have traveled to all the major operations around the world. 
the KRO, the Katusa Resource Opportunities Portfolio, is always going to where the puck will be. And our track record has proven that. One of our uranium picks is up 165%. The other one's up 400%. Look, it's up to you what you want to do with your portfolio. But I do recommend you click this link and find out more on how you can be part of the next opportunity. Stay safe.